Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'd first like to thank Marshall, the CEO of Primary Arms, for making this video possible. He first reached out to me trying to get my hands on the PLX Compact 1 to 8 first focal plane, but those weren't quite available just yet. So, in the meantime, he sent me this so I can try it out. So, before we get into the performance of this thing, what do you have? Well, you have a 2x fixed prism. This thing comes in at around $370, is made in China, is around 11 ounces, and has three reticle options. Currently, we're at two inches from the back glass to the front of the camera lens. This thing is rated for about three and three quarters with the eye relief, which is pretty typical for most LPVOs. However, as you'll see, we can push this thing all the way to about four and a half inches and still have a really good view through it. Now, no, it's not as good as what you've seen on the SLX 1X from Primary Arms. That thing's basically, as near as makes a difference, infinite as far as the eye relief goes. This is nowhere near as forgiving as the SLX 1X, but it's still pretty damn good, as you'll see throughout the rest of this video. Anywho, moving well past its three and three quarters worth of eye relief, we're at four inches and one more to about four and a half. This is as far as I am willing to push it. We can go a little bit farther, but beyond that, you can guess how it's going to look. Bringing it back to the specified eye relief from Primary Arms three and three quarters, you can see we have a very good ratio between the view through it and the amount of the scope body that we see. Illumination right there does seem very bright. They do claim this is daytime bright, but there's only one way to find that out for certain, and we'll check that out soon. But so far, it looks very bright. And as you'll see when we shut the lights off, it doesn't blossom out or bloom out too much. It's sharp, it's clear, and it's crisp. Exactly what I want from illumination. And in case if you were wondering, yes, this does have auto off. It works as simply as this. So let's get into a little bit more of a real world environment. You're already familiar with what we're looking at here. We have a power transformer in those lines at 30 yards, that brick building at about 400 yards, and that power tower way off in distance at about 800 yards. As I shift around the optic to literally on top of the camera, you're gonna see that, yeah, the field of view changes ever so slightly from going from one extreme to the next, but the image quality does not change, and that's what I wanted to highlight here. No matter what, the image is always gonna look very good. Now, while I'm still adjusting the optic, let's talk about some comparison specs against its little brother, the SLX. Well, I already mentioned the price. There's about a $100 difference. But this thing weighs almost twice as much as the SLX, which is still fairly lightweight. It's about 11 ounces with the mount. But it's still something to take into consideration. Now, for those of you wondering what the field of view is, Primary Arms claims it's about 42 feet at 100 yards. Comparing that to the SLX, which is a 1X, it's 76 feet at 100 yards. So despite the fact this is twice the magnification over the SLX, you still manage to have more than half the field of view. So that's quite impressive. Moving on to the illumination, you can clearly see it is more than daytime visible. I would not really put it as daytime bright. It's not as bright as a dedicated red dot or holographic sight. I know many of you would like it to be even brighter. I myself wouldn't mind it one notch brighter, but overall in my usage of it, it's been more than bright enough. Another really nice thing about prisms are the reticles are on the second focal plane. So as you can see it here, when you're deep into the shadows, you still pick up the illumination, which is a really nice touch. It's one thing I like about second focal plane optics of any sort, and prisms are no different. With all that being said, let's really focus on how good the image looks through this thing. Keep in mind, we have a spread from 30 to 800 yards in this one frame, and everything seems to be extremely sharp, clear, and in focus. And to my eye, I don't really pick up any sort of artifacts like chromatic aberration. We do have a little bit of shadowing going on at the top, but that's only because of our eye relief. We could tweak that a little bit more, but then we'd see a little bit more of the scope body. To the naked eye, however, it's very hard to pick up that shadow unless you're really looking for it. Another thing that you won't really notice through this thing is any sort of fish eyeing or distortion. The image is very flat. So on top of having a good looking image that's sharp, you also have a very flat image that's very true as far as colors go. It really is something to behold. And keep in mind, this is Chinese glass. Usually the GLX lines are made in the Philippines, but for whatever reason, this is made in China, just like the SLX line. So go figure on that one. I did, however, ask Marshall if, if and when we could ever expect a PLX version of this. And he said, probably never. And the main reason for what he gave is just price. This thing is $380. The SLX is $280. A PLX would probably cost closer to a grand. And at that point, you're in ACOG money. Trijicon still makes the 1.5X ACOG, and it ironically fits itself right in between the SLX and the GLX in a couple of different features. Number one, it's seven ounces, so right in between there on weight. The reticles are very similar. And, well, magnification. 
but that's where the similarities sort of end. That ACOG costs a grand and actually has worse field of view than this thing. Trijicon only claims 39 feet at 100 yards, whereas this is 42. Now, what happens if you plan on using this thing in lower light environments? Well, here you can clearly see the sun has set and the sky has dimmed. To my eye, there's still a lot of brightness that comes through this thing. And rightfully so. It's only a 2x prism. And that's one thing where prisms, I feel, shine over, let's say, for example, LPVOs. There isn't a whole lot going on. It's a small little tube with a couple lenses, and that's it. And that's why I think Primary Arms was so successful at making both the SLX and this GLX be so good for the price. Because there isn't a whole lot going on. You don't have to worry about so many different complications. A good analogy is a watch. You don't need that much to tell the time. As far as the illumination goes, on full, you can definitely get a much better sense of just how bright this thing does get. And I feel that the gradients going from maximum to minimum are very well spaced out. You can find basically the perfect brightness setting for anything you're going to use. How does this thing work with night vision? I can't say I don't run NV yet, but that would be a much better question to ask Hoplophile. Will I ever run NV on this channel? Uh, maybe if I get an insane discount or a company is nice enough to offer it to me. I don't think I could ever quantifiably spend that much money on that. I'll admit, I was kind of worried about the field of view with this thing when I first got my hands on it. A 2x is, in my opinion, a very practical magnification range. A lot of the times when I run my drills or I you know, shoot my rimfire competitions, I usually crank up my LPVOs to about 1.5 to 2x. So I figured, hey, this has got to be pretty good. The field of view, the size, the weight on this thing, the illumination, the reticle, all work really well in conjunction. There isn't a whole lot to really talk about this in a negative way, except for maybe the illumination dial, which if you haven't seen my unboxing, you might have just noticed me toy around with it once I turned it on. And that's because it doesn't feel very positive to go into the detent. But that's about it. I mean, look at how clear of an image you have here at those distances. Those are, that's 15 yards. That's 10 yards we're looking at over here. I was impressed with the SLX at being a 1x and looking as good as it does at these same distances, but this 2x is just, it's a, its on another level. Now, I've already showcased a lot of the eye box and how forgiving it is, but let me just make it live for you one more time. Again, you can't expect this thing to be that good, but it is really that good. It's more than forgiving at any sort of position. You could be behind this thing about a foot and a half like I am and still be able to find the center and walk your way into it without issues. It is... Well, frankly, fantastic. Just how practical is a 2x prism at close range? Well, let's find out. We're at about 15 to 20 yards here. This is one of our rimfire matches that we hold monthly. Now, going in between these targets, my friend's standing in the way, unfortunately, but you have three small poppers and the two large poppers. Those intermediate distances right there is just enough where you can't see the other one easily enough. If they're a little bit closer together or farther apart, though, like here with those three little swingers or the plate rack that you see in the middle of the dueling tree, it's really a non-issue. If you're getting into closer distances than that, honestly, just can't your rifle to the side and just use your barrel as your guide. Use it like, you know, a bead sight on a shotgun. Now, this is only one stage out of five for the day. There was about 10 shooters, and after the match was done, I let everyone that wanted to use it, use it. In fact, I just handed it to people and said, let me know what your thoughts are. And every single person had the exact same thought. This is really good. And I think you would, too, if you opted to buy one of these. As far as how I placed, well, it's a local match. Not many people really take it seriously. And out of the 10 shooters, I came in first by a fair margin. Now, I know it sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm not. A lot of people like to go there and have fun. I like to push myself in every regard and test optics at the same time. And this was a very good pairing. I honestly don't have much that goes in the way of a good comparison between this, but on the left we have the GLX, and on the right we have the first gen SLX 2.5X, which I reviewed many, many years ago. As you can see, there is quite a bit of difference between these two. In fact, there's more than just the optical itself and the illumination, it's just the entire reviewing style. Everything has really been streamlined and fine-tuned to what I consider to be much, much better. In fact, it's kind of hard for me to watch that. Anyway. Glass-wise here, they don't even stack up even remotely close. The SLX 2.5X is a big honk-chonk thingamabob, and I don't really recommend it. However, I do recommend the SLX 1X, which is seen here. The reason why the two of these are 
bunch of different sizes. I have the SLX pushed much farther forward on the pick rail, so you could really get a good idea of how vast the exit pupil and eye relief is on that. Other than that, the only other thing is the Steiner S432, which is not really what I would consider a fair comparison between anything else, because the thing is, it was like 45 ounces, maybe maybe 100 pounds, something like that, and a 4X, clearly, and just massive eye box. It was the only other prism I could pull out of my library to show you guys the least image quality, because the S432 has a perfect image. To give you a really good sense of the field of view, I do have the GLX a little bit closer to the camera. I think it was like a pick slot or two. Not a whole lot of difference, but you can clearly see how many targets you can count right there. Four to the left for, off a of dead center. Now you can only see three. There is a little bit of a dance between perfect field of view and image to body ratio. And you can set it to whichever you prefer. But it's nice to know that at least the eye box is forgiving enough to allow you to tweak it however you like. Ultimately, there isn't much else to really talk about with this thing. It's as simple as it gets. It's a 2X prism. It's got, I think, way more pros than it has cons. In fact, the only con I can really think of is maybe the illumination control is a little wonky. And the cover, they definitely did not have the right depth or width on the groove to put a coin in there. If you watch the unboxing, I basically strip it because it's so shallow and so wide, you don't get a really good purchase on there. I did talk to Marshall about that. He said there should have been a revision to that. So maybe I got an older spec one. I'm not too sure. I'm still waiting for an answer from him. But I will definitely update the comment with that information because it's nice to know. I should also mention that the bottom of this does and will receive mini ACOG mounts. So if you wanted to throw a QD lever on this or different height or different offset, it's as easy as just purchasing from any of the manufacturers that produce them for that. And that's really it. There's only the one con. Everything else is a pro. Now, as far as the cost, what do I think about it? I think 380 ish dollars for this thing is more than reasonable for how it performs. I've had nothing but good luck with it and great success. And I think you would too, especially if you're looking to keep it really simple. You can't get much simpler than a fixed prism like this. Zero it out for whatever caliber you have or whatever reticle that you get and just shoot the damn thing. I'm sure these will come up on sale for way cheaper than 380 bucks, especially as they hit the market a little bit more. I'm sure you'll find these for like low threes. And at that point, for me, the value is definitely there to own one. But only you can place a value on something. No, don't think the illumination just crapped out. That's just, you know, auto shut off because the thing was sitting for a while. But do you think a Ferrari's worth a half billion dollars? No, you drive a Corolla. That's five grand that you bought used and it does everything you need. Precisely. Only you know what something is worth to you. For me, I think it's well worth the $370 that this thing goes for regularly. And if you get it on sale for anything less, well, that's just extra gravy. A huge thank you to the CEO of Primary Arms, Marshall, for sending this out for me to review. I really, truly am humbled and appreciative that you'd reach out to me directly to have me review your stuff. It just goes to show myself, as well as I hope everyone here watching, that they at least stand by their products enough to want to send them to me so I can review them, whether it's good or bad. It just so happens that this has been absolutely excellent. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. And as always, see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand but you can still help by using my affiliate links in the description below and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.